Okay, so here's the ads we've been working on. You see it's been cleaned up nicely on the inside. This isn't finished. I'm going to have to go back and regrind this after heat treat to clean off the scale from heat treating. But there's not going to be any major grinding. I'm not going to have to take a bunch of pits out or, or reshape it or do anything like that. After heat treat, it's just clean up. I've started the bevel just to, to take some material off to make it easier after heat treating. I'll go a lot slower after heat treat to keep it from overheating. So the more I can do before heat treat, the better. This is all down to a 220 finish. That just helps prevent stress risers. I might actually have to start at 120 when I, I go back. So let's put this in the oven and uh, bring it up to heat to, to temperature and we'll get it heat treated. For hardening I'm going to put this in my electric heat treat oven. This will bring it up to temperature. I'll bring it up to initially to 1200 degrees. And I'm going to let it soak at 1200 degrees for a while. And after I'm sure that it's soaked all the way through and that it's made it to that temperature, then I'll go up to the hardening temperature, which will be 1475 for this. And then I'll quench an oil. It's water hardening steel, but it gets plenty hard quenched in oil, and that's just a little bit less stress on the the steel so we'll we'll oil quench it even though it is w1 steel okay this is about up to heat um, this pretty well stops a little bit short of the the mark and tries to sneak up on it but it's been in here at this temperature for about 20 minutes now i brought it up initially to 1200 let it so soak at 1200 degrees for 20 minutes so now we're ready to, to quench. We're going to quench in warm oil. I preheated the oil to about 200 degrees. Okay, so as quickly as possible, we go into the oil. I quench the entire head. Remember, this is a mild steel head with a tool steel body. So we're quenching the entire head. The mild steel is not going to harden, but it uh, helps cool better and it doesn't smoke as much, nor does it uh, flare up and cause a fire in the oil. So there's no, not as much need for a variable temper that I would do if this was an all tool steel ads. So that's cooled off nicely. Now we're ready to put that in the tempering oven. Okay, so these are now hardened, but they're brittle hard. So we need to temper them, take some of the hardness out. I'm going to start that tempering process in a toaster oven which is not quite as hot as I would like. This only goes up to 450 degrees, but I'll leave them in here for an hour, and that will take the stress out so they aren't likely to stress crack, but ultimately I want to temper them just a little bit more. I'll take them up to 500, maybe 550, and that will give me a Rockwell hardness of about 57, 58, but I'll have to do that in the uh, other heat treating oven, and I have to let it cool off completely before I can then bring it back up to to 500. It'll be a few hours before it gets cool enough to, to do that in. So I want to de-stress them first and that's why I'm putting them in the toaster oven. So here's one of the ads as we've been working on. It's been hardened, it's been tempered. There's no cracks, no warps, no no funny little twists. The edge is still good and thick so we're gonna have to, to work on that. First thing I want to do though is I want to clean up the inside just like we did before the inside is going to be the most difficult and more likely to generate heat because I'm working more care closely in there and uh, can't get away from the wheel quite as easily but anyways I'd rather get the inside cleaned up first so we're going to start with that and take that to about a 400 grit before we go on to the outside and because of this thick edge we don't really have to worry about overheating so much 
I'm going to be using a uh, KMG style grinder. This one I, I made myself uh, with a small wheel attachment. This one runs slower than the other one does. So this is what we're going to work on and we'll get that set up and get to work. Okay, we're going to switch to a 400 grit belt, and this belt has a scalloped edge, so it's less likely to dig in and leave track marks on the inside of the ads. And that makes for a really nice belt. It's a little bit softer belt than some of the others too. Okay, so there's after the 400 grit. Uh, this here is just a little bit of scale that didn't want to sand off real easy, and it's not going to be in the way at all. It's going to take 100 years of use before anybody sharpens that back to that point, so it just doesn't really matter. I've also started to establish a little bit of an inside micro bevel that guarantees a nice polished surface there, so you don't have to completely polish this entire inside surface. I probably won't do any more on there other than the micro bevel will take higher. So the next thing to do, I don't, this has all been done to 220, all these other surfaces. I don't feel any need to, to go back and, and work on any of these. Um, the bevel, so next thing is to grind, grind the bevel and get it to start sharpening. Uh, we'll start with a 60 grit belt and as soon as it's close, we'll go to 120 and we'll start to raise a, a burr at 120 and then we'll work through successively smaller grits trying to, uh, to get a nice sharp edge and then finally go to some polishing. Okay, we've gone to a back to the, the 8 inch contact wheel with a 60 grit, new 60 grit belt on here. And we're going to start working on the primary bevel and start working towards sharp. The first step's really grinding and then we'll get into the sharpening, but it's really all looks about the same. I will actually start with a, a hollow grind on this belt. I'll work this way and it'll create just a slight hollow right here. Kind of hard to show without my finger blocking the view. But it'll hollow grind that and that'll help me register later when I want to make a, f a flat grind I'll work right here and create a, a more of a flat bevel.
okay we've got a nice hollow ground on here but in the long run I don't want a hollow ground on an ads an ads needs to follow a curve and a hollow ground just means it's contacting here and here and it's not as well a supported cut um, but that really helps me index it in this next step so with a fresh 120 grip belt I can put this right on the the edge and I can look down it and see and this will give me a nice flat grind I can not only see here that I'm following the bevel and staying flat but I'll also be able to see a little bit of a burr coming up and this actually has just the slightest burr from the 60 grip belt so when I've done this and got an even grind line here with a 120 and I have a burr on the inside then it'll be time to go to a 220 or 240 grip belt